I'm Jason, and I'm Bach, baby. That's B-A-W-C, Build Apps Without Code, where I teach non-technical people how to build apps without writing one line of code. Today we're going to look at Bubble's API Connector. And if you're non-technical and think that the API is a little too technical for you, it's not. And I'm going to demystify it a little bit for you today. But first, what the f*** is an API? Well, an API is just a way for different apps to talk to each other. For example, if you wanted today's weather in your app, you could use a weather API to grab that data. Or if you wanted Google Maps data, you could use the Google API. Basically, if you need data that doesn't exist in your own bubble database, you can use an API to retrieve that data from somewhere else. Or if you want to send data from bubble to another app, you can do that as well. Now, some APIs are free, some are paid, some require a key or authentication, some are open and public, and some are easy to set up, some are a little more complex. Today we're going to focus on the basics, so we're going to choose an API that is free, open, and easy to set up so you can get rolling on your API adventure. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's find an API. I'm going to type into Google free, open, public APIs and see what we get. API means application programming interface, by the way in case you were interested. However, not important. Here's our free open public APIs. There's a lot of stuff here that you can mess around with. Just pick the first one. Weather forecast. Predict age based on a name. Um, Fifty-three. I'm not that old. Crypto. Board activity suggestions, cocktail recipes, more crypto, random dog images, that could be fun. Popular memes, jokes, lots of stuff here you can play with. We're gonna choose board. The board API lets you find something to do. So when you're bored with bubble, you're not aimlessly wandering the streets. Let's be honest though, we'll never be bored with bubble. All right, so we're here. What we need to do is find the documentation. Check out the documentation. Click. So how do you read API documentation? Usually, when you open it up, you get a list of things that you can do. And these are called methods. So I can get a random event. Or find an activity by its key. Or find a random activity with a given type. Bunch of other stuff. We're going to focus on get a random event. Now this says get. What is a get? Well, it's a type of method and it lets you get something. This API only lets you get, but others might let you post, which lets you create something new somewhere else. For example, if I was hooked up to Twitter's API and I wanted to create a tweet, I might use a post. A put, which lets you update something somewhere else, and a delete, which lets you delete something. Get is the most common one, and it lets you retrieve data. So if I want data from somewhere outside of Bubble, and I want to bring it into Bubble, I'm going to need to use a get. The next important thing here is the URL, which we can see right here. This is also called an endpoint, and it's the first thing we need when we connect uh, board API with Bubble. So, let's go to Bubble. We're going to head over to Plugins. Add a plugin, and it actually comes up right here, API Connector. You're going to want to install this. Free plugin made by Bubble. Done. Add another API. First thing we need to do is name it. We'll call this board API. Authentication. Uh, most APIs are going to require some kind of key or authentication. For this tutorial, we're just going to use this free and open API. So we can choose none or self-handled because there is no key 
Let's scroll down a bit and expand this. We're going to name this endpoint. We'll call it get activity. Now here I can choose a method. We know we want to get because back over in our documentation, it says get and we're retrieving data. So we know we're getting something. Here's where I want to put the URL. So let's grab this. This is the endpoint. Drop it in here. A couple other things to note here. Use as, we're going to use as data. You can also use your API call as an action. We'll stick with data. Data type, JSON. I'm Jason, and this is Build Apps with JSON. Most APIs use JSON, so just leave it on JSON. We're not using any headers right now. We're not using any parameters right now. We're basically done. You just have to hit initialize call. Don't forget this part. Here we're just going to make sure that the data we're getting from the API is mapped to the correct type of field. So the activity would be text. The type, which could be social, would also be text. Participants looks like a number, so that's a number. This all looks good to me. So we're just going to press save. And we're done. We can use this now. Let's go to design. Let's build this app out a bit. We'll call this board API. And we'll use this element to grab the activity. So let's erase this. Insert dynamic data. And what we're going to search for here is get data from an external API. You can just find it in this list or you can just type in API, it'll come up. API provider, board API, get activity. This is the connection we just set up. Close. And which field do we want to show here? This API brings in a few different fields. We want the activity. We can also show the type, the participants, the price. Activity for now works for me. Let's preview. Learn how to use a French press. Have a jam session with your friends. Okay, so we can see it's working. This is the data we're getting from the API. All right, let's see what other data we can get. I'm gonna grab a group. We'll call this group activity. Column, put some row gap on there. Not fixed width. Throw this in here. Now in the group, we'll do what we just did in the text element. Type of content, get activity. This is our API endpoint. And the data source, we'll use get data from external API and do the same thing here, board API. Now in our text element that's inside the group, we're just gonna get the parent groups activity. Now if we throw another text input here, if we look here, it also gives us accessibility, type, participants. Let's grab the type. And now insert dynamic data, parent groups, get activity, and we'll get the type. Memorize a favorite quote or a poem. Type, education. Now let's add participants. We'll just grab this, copy paste. Now instead of the type, we want participants and update the caption. Visit a nearby museum. Type recreational participants one. Next, we're gonna look at parameters. Parameters are options that can be passed with the endpoint to influence the response. For example, if I only wanted an activity that had the type music, and I didn't want any other types, how would I do that? Let's look here. Find a random activity with a given type. So here in the URL, it says question mark type equals type. General rule, anything after the question mark is a parameter. So type is a parameter. You can also see it here. In this example, type equals recreational. Let's go back to our plugin, add parameter. The key in this case is 
type. And the value, we'll put in music for now, but we can also make this dynamic in the bubble designer. Uncheck private, reinitialize call, looks good. Now if I go back to the documentation and scroll down, here is the different types that we can use. Sometimes the API will also give you an endpoint where you can get the list. In this case, we're just gonna copy and paste this list right into our app, copy, and let's just throw a drop down onto the screen here. Call it drop down type, put in our choices here, and let's just clean this up. Okay, so here are my options. These are the different types that the documentation gave us. So when I choose a type, I want this to regenerate with the type that I chose. Let's go back to our group where we're calling the API. Data source, board API, get activity. Click on there. Now we have a parameter here. Since we set up a parameter back in our plugin right here, type equals music, that parameter is showing up here now. Now it's gonna say music by default, but we can insert dynamic data and we're gonna get the value from the dropdown. So drop down type, value, close. One more thing we'll do here, this group, hide on page load, and we're gonna add a condition that says if drop down type, this value is not empty, this element is visible. So this group's only gonna show after we choose an option. All right. Listen to music you haven't heard in a while. This is type music. It's only gonna give us music because we chose music in our dropdown. If we choose another one though, relaxation. Do something you used to do as a kid, type relaxation. Have a picnic with some friends. Learn Morse code. Beep, 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 beep. Fix something that's broken in your house. Things you cannot do with or without code. Fix something that's broken in your house. Cook something together with someone. This one requires two participants, however. And if I did only have two people, I could go to plugins, add parameter, participants, value, two, not private, Reinitialize. Error, no activity found with the specified parameters. Okay, so there is no music activities with two participants, I guess. We'll just put this to cooking for now. That works. Let's throw in a radio button. Radio participants. One, two, default value one. And now on the group, Number of participants, dynamic data, radio participants value. So if I chose cooking with one person, prepare a dish from a foreign culture. If I change it to two, cook something together with someone. Go swimming with a friend. If you would like to be my plus one and go for a swim with me, just hit me up in the comments with a just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. All right, of course, API connections can get much more complicated than this, but these are the basics of how to set it up in Bubble, and it's enough to get you started. Now, go find some free APIs, have some fun, show me what you did. Let me know in the comments. All right, if you go to buildappswithoutcode.com slash board API and sign up, I will send you the link to this very Bubble project that we just worked on. So you can click around and see exactly how we set it up. Appreciate you watching. As always, if you learned something today, please subscribe. I have more bubble videos in the pipeline, so turn on notifications and you will not miss the next one. You're awesome. Don't forget it. See you in the next one. Peace.